problem with authority and a deep-seated resentment of those who he feels have impeded his progress professionally. The suspect has trouble with lasting relationships and is possibly a high-functioning alcoholic, with alcohol being utilized as a trigger in the commission of these crimes. Someone who is in that cohort or his victimization of vagrants might merely present an opportunity for him to assert his superiority and intellectual prowess. Do you recognize you yourself, McNulty? You're still coming there? At the end of your day, like... Oh, but she's not there anymore. Good call, my dear. Protect yourself and your kids. Think about it, McNulty. Christopher Parklow. The lesser man might get pissy because you jumped the line, Bump. Me? I remember Parklow's name from all those cases last year. Congrats. Uh, yes, you connected one desk uh, to Chris. You can be proud of yourself. It's a good work. You're not gonna give him the guys he wants? You're not helping them, you're buying their silence and they know it, you just discovered it. Do one? Still searching for a job. You're doing great, do one, you're gonna find one. what Bubs was doing. You're not gonna be the next Bubs. Do the job? You're gonna tell us the truth. Clay, you're gonna help off. Well, I'm tired of your bullshit, you know, your campaigns and all. I'm not that interested right now. So, Clay, it scares me to think of the damage you can do with two boats and a liquor board. And I'm proud of my girl for not accepting all of this plan like that, like...
I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm so glad. I'm glad. He's gonna give you the answer of this code. I'm sure. She's no reads like Omar had him on the Marlowe's wing, content of the police. Anyway, I gotta go. Oh, by the way, I told Gregson. Oh, man, you don't take hell any more people. She was about to jump in the serial murders with How does she take it? Not great. She has a moral compass. Where's Paul Moore? Where's Paul Moore? We're not too good in the Northwest. Be careful, Sidney. Ah, that's the answer? Certainly, the last seven years have not brought the same levels of federal commitment to American cities as from previous administrations. Light to come down for the homeless people, like. Without shelter in our city. Not tonight do you brand them, and not tomorrow. How sure he knows how to talk. We will protect you. You're there, you can't make a lie about this speech, right? Spike in your lead. I'm not running a story about a public gathering. The lead anecdote, end quote, is from an unnamed homeless woman. She doesn't want to be known as homeless. I explained that. Uh -huh. There are hundreds of homeless down there. People who voluntarily attended this event. Uh -huh. I'm going to guess that any number of them would let you put their names in the paper. But, but you chose the one who doesn't want to. What the hell with you if you think I made it up? You did! We have a standard that we follow here. I'm going to follow. He's going to go to the two chiefs who are going to. I'm suffering inside. In advance. This one is gonna have you back when you're a fucking liar. Here comes Gus. Support our staff. You read out in Scott's visual copy? I oh, am. Yeah. But I thought the anonymous attribution of the public staff. Gus, let's discuss this. Actually, I did discuss it. I discussed it with the Mitchell editor and he agrees. And as the line editor working the story, I feel I've done my job. You want to go another way? You pull the story back and re edit. But we have a sourcing policy here, and I know it, and I do not feel comfortable bending the rules in this instance. You're doing that in front of all of the guys. This one told you that you don't have a team spirit. If he's getting fired, I'm... Oh, straight to bed. Get up. <laughs> Hello. 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 I respect you so much to put boundaries now to understand that you deserve better. Oh, the second one important, in fact. The times of all are 35 seconds. And that's the page for these four. Jeez. Cheese wax One is for monk, one is for cheese. You too, huh? No. Yeah. Not me. That's my girl. Be with oh, Buck. A month later, someone tells him, oh, Jimmy died. Jimmy who? Jimmy the cop? Oh, they say him. Family, that's it. Family? And if you're lucky... No, I'm not going to be there and I'm not going to be surprised. That's all the best of us get. Everything else is just... There is no serial killer. And no murders. I made it all up. They, they, were, they were shutting us down. They were, they were just... It's hard to explain. I don't even know where the anger comes from. I don't know how to make it stop. They fucking task me. They do work. I think that she's gonna be disappointed like I was, Jimmy. She had respect for you because you respected your job at least. Now that I've done all this, I'm uh, now that I watch myself do it, I can't even stand it. 
Lester says he's close. Time will pass, and I'll be able to shut this thing down. If you don't go to jail, you have no fucking right. I know. This is my life, too. And when you start to tell the story, you think you're the hero. And then when you get done talking, you... I love you, Biddy, for that. I respect you so much for that. She loves him and she can close the door on him because... No. on him like you are a marlito I'm glad that this guy made this job right but I'm afraid that I was right I'm afraid just right now that this was a confirmation that someone tried to put that on Omar you know that fake serial killer was supposed to be a white guy of that age no no, 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 I'm wrong. No one tried to do that. I just want to cry a little more for Omar. Can I? <sighs> what can I tell you guys? I'm just... I said what I said, you know, during the big break that I took just after it happened. The fact that it happened so quickly I was totally surprised by it, for sure. The fact that it was a little kid, you know, a young boy who did it, I was surprised by it. The fact that they really did the scene and dealt with the information just like that, I was surprised by it. <laughs> but at the same time, I understand the choice to make it like that. The fact that it happened so quickly, yes, why would they do a big scene for it? Each one of these characters, you know, this show is there to say that none of them counts. Each one of them is gonna die and be replaced by someone else. The drug business is always gonna continue. All of these cops, they're not so good and maybe sometimes they're gonna arrest the right people sometimes not and it's not gonna be enough this show is there for that so to have Omar being killed I'm not surprised by it because in fact I even predicted it since two episodes the fact that it happens so suddenly into the show for sure I would have wanted something bigger because I feel that the character deserved it like you know for example when they killed <laughs> Stringer, like, Stringer had a big scene. Omar could have had one. No, he didn't. And again, I understand why. And the fact that it was by a young guy, I understand also the logic behind it because it's to show that it's not always done by the big guys. It's not always done, you know, into a big fight, a big moment and all. Every one of them can be dangerous, everyone can have a gun and you are always have to, to be careful, to notice things and right there Omar didn't do it, he didn't pay attention to that kid who didn't run away, he didn't pay attention to that kid who was with Michael, he was not scared of going to that place, you know, that Korean store and someone entering just like that, he didn't look at that person I understand also the logic for the writers to, to make it like that because not all of the deaths can be big things done by the big guys and it's logical and great to do it, to say it, to show it but for sure for a character like him who was so great that we had seen so long and I'm pretty sure that you know right now I'm binge watching this show which was out a long time ago but I'm pretty sure that when it was out this character was well appreciated by everyone like if I fall in love with this character binge watching this show I'm pretty sure that you all loved him 
when this show was out for the first time. How did you take his death, the fact that it happened like that? How did you take it? I already asked you the question about the fact that this season 5, did you know that it would be the last season? So, were you prepared to say goodbye to this show? It's not the same, you know, like I said, me, I know that I just have two more episodes to watch, so two more episodes without Omar. If this show was out now and I wouldn't know, you know, that this is the final season, I would be like, that's it, I have to continue to watch this show and to not have Omar into it. I'm gonna try again. <laughs> Bunk discovering his body, everyone discovering that Omar died and just dealing with the information like that. That note that Omar had on him, I thought that maybe it could be a way to translate the code with the timing and all. It was a little clue to help you to understand that Cheese is one of Marlowe's lieutenants, so it helped a little. But it was truly still now who cracked the code, understood everything, and I'm so proud, you know how much I love Sidna, so I'm so proud. Right there, the fact that this body was not with the right name, I could be like, that shit, cops did a mistake and at least one of these guys understood that it was a mistake, thank God. But I'm like, maybe it was made on purpose. And with that theory that I had just after his death, I hope that I'm wrong. Because truly during this moment, I was like, that's it, they're all gonna know that Omar died. And I was right, they all learned that information really quickly. I was like, they're all gonna be sad because they had a certain connection with Omar. In fact, they were not sad at all, they just considered the information. And I was like, McNulty, maybe he's gonna use it. But I remembered only at the end with the fact that his name was on that guy, that yes, you're seeing since the beginning that your fake serial killer is a white guy around that age, so you couldn't have put it on Omar. But still, maybe you're gonna use his identity. Oh, I don't know. I hope that it's not gonna be the case. Carver, learning about what you're doing, at least a part of it, accepted to go with it. Kima, learning what you're doing, is not accepting it. BD learning what you're doing is not accepting it. I respect my girls and I love them even more for that. Yes, Kima, don't put yourself into that bullshit. Stay honest, so stay with your moral compass. I don't think you know that she's gonna say the truth to anyone. Ah, oh, maybe Daniels? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe not Daniel's like he's a superior now. No, she's not gonna say it. But she's not gonna go with it like she's gonna go like Bunk, I think. And she's gonna understand that Bunk knew the truth and that's why he was reacting like that. And BG to understand that she deserves better than that and that during all of this time he lied and he put them also into into this lies, you know, in a way like it's a risk also for them because they're connected to him. You deserve better, BD, and I'm glad that you saw that. And I'm glad that you have your boundaries. And I'm glad that even if you love him, you're not accepting that. You're closing your door to him. And oh, I'm so glad. I'm so proud of her for that. And really during this moment, I felt that her reaction was a little like mine. The first time that I, I was seeing him, you know, transforming that death scene into a fake crime scene. It's really like she was disappointed at him and I think that Biddy at the beginning, you know, when we met her and all, she began to have feelings for McNulty because she was admiring him for what he was doing at the job and also I really felt it like she reacted like me. She was disappointed at him and she was like, really, you're not respecting your job? At least you had that. At least I thought that you were doing all of that right now. You were losing your mind, your nerves, and you were losing us because of your job to do something great with your job. And no, in fact, 
all of that was bullshit. At the newsroom, I'm really scared for the editor. The fact that he knows that the journalist is a liar, yet that guy, you know, seeing so testifying about it, he's gonna want to make a correction about it. Everyone, you know, into that newsroom, they know that this one is lying, that it's not the first time, like, that there is something wrong. This editor, he has the nerves, the balls to say no to that story. And he's right, you know, you have a gathering with so many people, homeless people, who are okay to be there, you know, who are okay to be on television and all, and they wouldn't be okay to give their names. But for sure, the other one would, uh, wouldn't be okay with it. And the fact that a little before, he said to the editor, you're not playing for the team, I prefer for you to have a better spirit. I have the impression that he's gonna get fired and it's gonna break my heart because he was a good journalist and a good editor. Like, but he was still trying to find some information with cops, with stuff. He was also such a good editor because he knows how to lead a team, how to organize a team their works, their jobs, he knew also how to deal with their articles, which one deserves the right place and all. I would have loved, you know, to, to work for a guy like him, for example, as a journalist. But right there, I really have the impression that he's gonna get fired. I'm in depression. Like, really, uh, Kumar is dead, Magnus is continuing with his lies, Lester also. They cracked the code and maybe they're gonna have more information thanks to it and he's doing also his little plan with Clay Davis. So they're progressing and maybe they're gonna succeed. But at this point, I don't want for them to succeed. Uh, it, it's gonna feel unfair, it's gonna feel like they don't deserve it and I don't want it in fact. And It's awful to feel like that for characters that I love in fact. And for sure, I want for Marlowe to be stopped and all, even more after what happened to Omar. I'm not mad at this kid. If you're wondering about it, I'm not mad at this kid. He did what he had to do. It's part of the game, part of the business. I'm a little surprised that he didn't go to Marlowe to say, I did it. Because for what I remember, he was the one working for Michael and before that working for Ney. You know that one who is trying to prove that much that he's so great when he's really that little? Oh, I'm so proud of Duquan! Duquan who was searching for a job. Duquan who, you know, who tried again and again and finally found that little. I'm a little worried because I'm scared of him, you know, being outside in the streets and all. But maybe he can stay clean no matter what and... Still, he's gonna be right there for Bug. I'm proud of him to quote for now. I hope that everything is gonna be okay for him. Bunk, he has something against Chris, that's cool. Not against Noop, and he's gonna have to wait no matter what. What can you put on Michael for now? You can put things on Marlo, on Chris and Snoop, but Michael? He was not inside, you know, when they attacked these three, you know, with the kid as a witness. He was not inside, no one saw him. Maybe Michael can have nothing. Hmm, we'll see. Put! To have news about Put, to see that he has a job, a regular job, and that he's doing so great. And you know, he looked great, he looked clean, he looked cool. It gave me up, you know, for Duquan, for maybe at some point Michael, Randy, all of them to be like put, maybe. You know, Denis, he didn't stay into the street. Maybe at some point, in fact, they're all getting out and they're all taking a regular job. <sighs> I, I don't know what to think, like, I still have two episodes to discover. And I'm like, two episodes, is it enough really to close this show? To close the season for sure, but to close this show, 
Did they know that they had only this season to close everything? But at the same time I said it, I'm not expecting for them to close all of the drug businesses stories because it would be logical for them to not be close to say that everything is continuing no matter what. But I want closures for characters. Do they have the time to do that and still progress on the big stories? Two episodes, it seems not enough to close all of the things that I want for them to close. And two episodes, I have the impression that yeah, yes, it's not enough. And at the same time, now that Omar is dead, it's too much. Maybe, in fact, in the next two final episodes, I'm gonna have three more of them dying, being killed. At this point. I'm a little desperate, you know, for the end of this show and all. Also, because I fought during almost all of this season against what McNulty is doing. And I have the impression that this show by seeing that thanks to him, you know, their people had resources for their cases and they managed to close them to do great things with them, like for example for Bunk or for this other guy. So, you know, this show is justifying and is saying that McNulty was right when for me it's not the case. No, the end that doesn't justify the means. To have a moral compass, it's important for yourself, for the society, you know, for doing what is right. Also for your loved ones, for people around you to not suffer for it. Like really, this show is proving it also, like because of what McNulty is doing, because of his life, people are suffering. I'm glad that they are showing it and I know that it's on purpose that they are showing it. But at the same time, for the professional aspect, for the job, for the case, for the other cases, I have the impression that this show is saying that McNulty was right to lie, to fabricate everything. For sure, I don't like that. All of the campaign aspect, uh, I don't care. <laughs> like, I think that you saw it, I'm not that interested by it. No, not that much. Okay, I'm gonna stop this review right now and I will see you on the last session of binge watching for the two last episodes of this last season of The Wire, of this binge watching. <laughs> Alright, it's gonna be something. Again, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can already have my reactions and my thoughts about these two last episodes and with an extended reaction part for this episode but also for all of the episodes <laughs> of The Wire and you just have to subscribe to the level 2, only 5 euros and you can have all of my binge watching of all of these 5 seasons, all of the episodes with extended reaction part for all of them. Okay, it's all for you and for me for today, so it's all for me for now, so bye for now, bye. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Doc. Uh, are you telling me that you built a time machine? Great.